Good evening and welcome to Tessa Tech, the Opera Festival from Cockpit Broadcasting. My name's Bill Banks-Jones, Artistic Director of Tessa Tech, live from the Cockpit Theatre right now. And really happy to be here to present Timeless Figure by uh, Martin Bussey. It's um, a lovely piece of work, but I need to say a couple of things to you before we show it to you. The first is that like everybody, we've had a hell of a year um, and turned ourselves inside out and upside down to make this series of live performances um, with live audiences, as you'll see by the end of the video. Um, and it has been an amazingly kind of painful and at the same time creative thing for our artists. In this show has not been affected quite as much as others, but all of them have been affected to some degree. We've all been in this touch and go place and the staging um, has been very inhibited by social distancing. So you have to indulge your artist a little bit and um, understand quite how imaginative everybody's been in presenting their work. The second thing, I'm here to say is that we are working with the Paul Hamlin Foundation now, as we did with the Depart Department for Culture, Media and Sport to do a pilot performance. So we're now with Paul Hamlin trying to make a big report for the whole sector on how we're reopening theatre and opera to live audiences indoors. And to that end, we'd really appreciate your feedback. You'll get an email after this performance asking you various questions about what you thought and it's really helpful to know even though you're in a, a, a broadcast performance we need to gather as much information as we can to help the sector reopen thing number three is we've kept the prices very low for these interactive broadcasts um, because we'd love you to show the appreciation for the artists by clicking on easydonate.org slash time and showering them with money that should magically appear in your chat um, now and there you go and the fourth and final thing I'll say before the movie starts is just a tiny bit about how the interaction of this interactive broadcast works if you type a question in the chat it appears again magically on my screen and I can direct it to the correct person off the panel of artists who made or performed the show. Anyway, without further ado, let's watch Timeless Figure. Yes. 
Oh. 
Celebrate with a clock.
Beautiful thing, what a beautiful ending! It kind of lulls you into a place of calm. Where it's quite hard to get oneself going again. Um, and what a pleasure as well to see something with a live audience. We keep seeing pieces that we've done where there are um, a number of people doing certain things that have pushed social distancing the audience out of the camera shot. So you get this strange experience at the end where you think you're looking into a completely empty theatre, but actually they were there and it was packed on the back row, which was the only way we could use. Anyway, without 
further ado, let me ask our panel of artists to turn their sound and video back on. And we ought first to go to composer, auteur, Martin Bossi. Um, tell us more about what you'll do with your donations, Martin. And to remind everybody, easydonate.org slash time, which should appear in the chat. Anyway. Thank you, Bill. Yes, I mean, if people can donate, um, that that's great. Thank you very much for watching, first of all. But of course, uh, all these things do cost money. Um, we very much want to do future performances of Timeless Figure. Um, and one of the really moving things actually for me was working with uh, our musicians who I didn't know. I've known Peter for a while. And for all of them, that was the first work they had done since March. And that in itself was wonderful, but also they contributed so much to the piece itself. So I want to do more of that. We want to do more of that. Um, so if you feel that you can donate, that would be great. And also to tell your friends to come online and watch this show and see how wonderful Peter is. Yeah, well done, Martin. You, you, that's quite right. You can, any of you, watch this again any time over the next 28 days and anybody else can buy a ticket to watch this as well. And they can all shower you with donations. Um, it's. I was thinking during the broadcast, it's lovely coming together, you three, that Peter, we first worked together in Tete Tete's own co-production with the Royal College of Music of Frankenstein. And Laurel, you were one year our festival yeah. photographer, weren't you? So, and Martin wrote Mary's Hand. So it's, it's lovely feeling you all coming together, even though I'm not sure you knew that you did. Um, for our audience, a reminder that if you got any questions, type them into the chat. They'll magically appear on my screen and I shall pass them on. But um, I'll ask a few questions first to get us going. The first of which, I think, has to go back to Martin to tell us where the piece came from. What triggered this? What inspired it all? I can't remember, in all honesty. <laughs> Um, it's well. I do know you kindly mentioned Mary's hand, and Mary's hand was was a really important experience for me in collaborating um, to create a piece. And I came out of it determined that I wanted to do another piece. Um, and I know that this is about two years ago. I was still very much as I still am um, affected by having moved to the Cheshire Welsh border, um, which I love greatly. And it's full of a completely different history and style of living and everything. And uh, in Whitchurch, which is about nine miles from me, um, there is a, a branch for a certain supermarket, um, which we can probably name as Sainsbury's. And in the cafe in Sainsbury's, where I have spent quite a lot of time, they have a mural on the walls about Joyce the Clockmakers and a lot of the clocks that they made. And so that was actually the starting point. Uh, and it sort of grew and grew. And Peter was the obvious person because he is a Whitchurch uh, person, a Whitchurch lad. And that's really where it came from. But it grew out of that into something about time and how we perceive time, how time has changed, and the way that over the centuries, um, time has almost diminished because distances and travel have, have seemed to speed up. And so it gradually worked its way to that point at the end of the show where we're left with that digital signal and all those wonderful clocks, which are still wonderful, you feel have almost been overtaken, but not quite, because they still have uh, something to contribute of, of themselves. Yeah, it's a, a fascinating moment right now, because I think in the last six months, time has changed again for all of us. I um, have, you know, was galloping around and zooming and traveling and going to things all the time, but 
in the last six months hardly done any of that and yet don't seem to have gained any time at all it's been a bizarre experience anyway enough of me i'd love to ask laurel how um your input came to happen and where it came from what it was like for you uh yeah so um i was trying to uh create images that responded to the music and the text um sometimes literally photographing the clocks in, in Whitchurch or getting the, my UK photographer to do that for me. Um, and then non-literally just trying to create uh, a sense and a feeling of a mood of time, uh, aging, maybe time standing still or moving quickly. Uh, yeah, and creating lots of layers where the music became darker and uh, yeah, more heavy. Um, and that was portrayed in the images too. Yeah, I'm not sure we told the audience where you are. So, 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 where are you? Yeah, um, in the US, uh, currently in uh, Colorado, and all the images I took uh, were like from my time in the US. So it's been in New York, Chicago, and Colorado, all like kind of layered, layered together, which is again kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and. Uh, I a kind of bit of luck, I think, because in a way there's a different sense of time again in the States, in mm. those bigger cities. It is like very, very intense. Um, Peter, from Sainsbury's Cafe to the Cockpit Theatre, how has that been? Was that your first performance? This um, was the first performance of Timeless Figure, but um, no... Oh, we're losing. Uh, since uh, since the lockdown, we did a couple of things outdoors. Can you hear me okay? Uh, yeah, you you're with us again now. There was just some peculiar wobble there, but yeah. So you've done some outdoor performances, um, and so you presumably know the Sainsbury's Cafe in Whitchurch. <laughs> I do. Yeah, there's um, as Martin said um, correctly. There's like a mural of. Um, different clocks, Jace, um, Joyce's clocks. Um, but I grew up in Whitchurch um, and actually worked in that Saints Priest for about five Oh dear, we've lost you again. Um, here's a good question. Um, in, 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 uh, which photographed. Oh, you're coming and going a bit, Peter. Here's a, a good question from Fajr Hatcham to everybody. What do you think is different about watching this piece for audiences in London compared to people watching on stream from Whitchurch? I guess, Martin, you're the nearest to Whitchurch. Yeah, I, um, it's, it's been really good, actually, because uh, I think one thing I'd want to say, um, that Tete -tete had this wonderful idea of um, postcards for each show. And so I could go around my not huge village um, and deliver some of those and say to people, look, we've got images of Whitchurch and, and around here. Um, and it it means that there's a, a specific element to the piece, I think, so that if you are from around here, you would recognise things. Um, but also for people anywhere else, but yeah, particularly in London, there's the opportunity to, to capture the much wider scope of where these clocks went to. And that's behind um, the movement uh, towards the end where we hear a recording of the clockmaker singing about the places around Shropshire where he made his clocks. And then over the top of it, he was singing about Shanghai and Sydney and Cape Town City Hall, where where these, you know, he also made clocks or the firm made clocks. And it was an attempt to, to say, look, time actually really is different in different places. And, you know, I was able to get into the script, my favourite bit of general knowledge, that in Bristol, until the trains came, they actually had different time to London. And you can still see a clock in Bristol with the Bristol time sort of marked in. And things like that, um, I think maybe in London it will seem more the universality of time that, that you pick up on. For those of us up in Shropshire and Cheshire, we can actually say, yeah, I know where all those clocks are. Sadly, much too late, I discovered that 200 yards from me in our village school is a Joyce clock. 
it may yet get into the piece, I think. But it, the sequel. But yeah, there's well, no, talking not. of time, Martin, it has run out on us. I don't know where it all went, but I'm going to have to draw us to a close. I'll say once more, easy donate dot org slash time but amazingly we got to wave goodbye a shame we could talk for hours more maybe do it via twitter at tete opera um anyway thank you very much <laughs>